All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of In, R in Rhythm's Lightning Talks. I'm your host, Ted Parton. I'm In Rhythm's Tech Community Evangelist. And just as a reminder, every Thursday at 515 Eastern, we have a Lightning Talk. Uh, each one is hosted by one of our specialists uh, uh, from one of our six area practices, which include uh, Android, iOS, web, and cloud native, as well as SDED and DevOps. This week, we have Paul um, Plajevich with our web team, who's going to talk to us about TanStack Query, which is part of the TanStack open source libraries. Uh, so take it away, Paul. Awesome. Thank you for the introduction, Ted. And uh, welcome to TanStack Query. Have you ever wished interacting with server-side data was easier within your JavaScript UI code? Well, look no further, TanStack Query. If you're using React, Solid, Vue, or Svelte, it's, this is a library to work with server-side data that is packed with features, features as you can see. Um, so I think the best way that I can explain it is to show you how it works with a feature demo. So let's take a look. I have a uh, basic to-do application. Um, I have no tests and you can see on when the application loads, we have one fetch request. But if another client were to add a to-do and we go back to the browser, you can see another fetch request happened. TankStack query is interested in keeping your data fresh from the server. So um, it has some built-in features to do that, like uh, window refocus, it'll fetch your data. If you lose your network connection and regain it, it'll refetch your data. Um, you can also set up intervals for when fetches will happen. So if you want to fetch the server every five seconds, I'll just refresh here so you can see the network tab. You'll see that every five seconds, there is a fetch. And so that's pretty cool. You get to control how often um, we fetch for fresh data if you need to. You'll see down here as well that Handset Query comes with great developer tools. If you want to test your different states like loading or your error states, um, we can easily do that with a click of a button. So if we click trigger loading, that's my loading state. If we want to look at how my error state will display, we can click a button and see that. Um, by default, TanStack Query considers data stale immediately. So after a fetch, if I were to go to another tab and come back, there's going to be another fetch. But if we want to reduce the number of calls to the server um, with one change to the configuration, we'll say every 15 seconds, uh, we'll consider data stale. You'll see right now within the, within the developer tools, the data is fresh. If I were to go to another tab and come back, there's no extra fetch. But if the data goes stale, like it just did now, I can come back to the application and see another fetch. So it offers great control over uh, when you're getting data and keeping it fresh. Now, we're going to want to add, update, or delete to-dos at times. So if I were to want to say clean my room and add a to-do. Um, one thing to look out for before I even click add to-do, uh, Tanset Query has great optimistic UI features, which basically means we can update the state, have it loaded uh, within our application before the fetch even returns or the post request even returns from the server. So um, bang, it's right in our application. Um, this did take 400 milliseconds to complete the post request to the server, but we didn't wait 400 milliseconds. We displayed our uh, to-do right away. This keeps your app really responsive. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's a little demo of the tool, but let's now build our knowledge about TanStack Query. And the key features. It helps you fetch and cache data. We, we saw that, it's pretty cool. Uh, if you're using 
React Solid View or Svelte. Now this is for all your UI components. Um, so it, if, if another UI component mounts and you're using the same uh, query key, uh, then it's not going to refetch. If, it, if you don't want it to, you can share the data across all your components. One way it helps you is with loading, fetching, and error states. We saw that using the developer tools, but that is very easy with Panset Query. It's easy to mutate the cache or to change the values that are stored um, before the server responds. We talked about optimistic UI and rollbacks are easy. It uh, helps you keep your data fresh, which we saw. Uh, whether there's a refresh interval, um, the window is refocused, if you lose your net network, network connection and you reconnect, or if another component mounts, um, we'll see another fetch. There's well thought of optimizations. Um, if you make a fetch to the server and the data has not changed since when the data went stale, um, CanSat Query won't re-render your components. That's a great feature. Uh, if you want to go further, you can check out paginated queries. If you have data to display on more than, or a lot of data to display, um, infinite queries. If you want to make like an infinite scroll newsfeed, and Tanstax query supports GraphQL. So the advantages: you're going to write way less code, which means less time spent trying to manage data that's persisted on a server uh, when you're working within it within your UI application. You can reduce the number of requests to your server, uh, especially if you change the configuration of when data is stale or when to refetch. This is one of my favorite advantages. Uh, if you use something like Redux or ModX, uh, you can keep uh, synchronous uh, state changes within Redux and asynchronous uh, state changes with Tanset query, just to say, you can separate your server data from your UI data with your UI, um, with your state management solution. We saw the great developer tool that will help you along the way. And you'll be able to support way more edge cases if you utilize Tanset Query. So when not to use Tanset Query? It's overkill if you have a few fetches and your data does not change much it's not required for applications that don't require data to be cached. Um, this is the case for me right now with a client, I'm helping them build login and two-factor authentication um, capabilities. I'm interacting with the server, but I'm not needing to save that data and share it across components. It's more of just going through a flow. So this would not be a, a great use case for my specific application at the moment. Um, so that's a good example to keep in mind. If bundle size is important to you, here's the sizes for minified and minified and gzipped. Uh, if you have to support older browser versions, then I would check the documentation. Awesome, guys. That was uh, an overview of Tanset Query. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Hey, thanks, Paul. Uh, so tell me, uh, you mentioned pagination. Have, have you used that yourself? Like, uh, what, are there any gotchas there with that to use it? I no, I have not experienced it with pagination, but the documentation is great. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would check out the documentation. Could you show us again, like the, uh, you kind of went through a little quick, the segment of code where you uh, changed it to be a longer interval? Yeah, so over here, this is the React example. Uh, so we can provide some default options um, to React Query. And so one of them is the stale time. Um, probably in a real application, you'll want this a little longer. So like, say you would have it to be 60 seconds. And so every minute or so, or you won't see more, um, excuse me, you, you won't see more um, fetches. Uh, if 
if you go to another tab or something, or if another uh, component mounts, but that uses the same query key, um, you won't have more fetches. So that's one way to protect your server from uh, too many requests. Um, but yeah, this, so this uh, configuration change, and then also uh, it's possible you might want to make a request to the server every 30 seconds. So you would have a refetch interval um, as well if you wanted to. Awesome, thank and, you for going back over that. Yeah. yeah, and if you're using React, just like look how much functionality you get with a few lines of code and some settings. Um, you're just specifying a query key, which is where you'll store your data from the server or the the key, <laughs> and then a function to actually get the data from the server as the value. Um, but yeah, this is all you write, and you get all that functionality baked in. Um, and then the same for mutating state. It's a little bit larger because I'm trying to um, update the UI optimistically. So if I want to do um, the integration will show us again. I mean, just look how fast you just boom, the application right away takes the change. The server just completed. Um, so this is a little bit extra code just in case there's an error we're going to roll back. But for how much you get out of the box, it's quite a great library. Nice. I'm not sure if you saw the chat, but uh, uh, Brian asked, uh, what endpoint are you calling? Oh, so I actually set up a serverless um, AWS setup where I have like API gateway and a Lambda function, or actually two Lambda functions and um, DynamoDB. I did it just for the demo, just put something together quick. Yep. Nice. And so uh, and I know you, I take it you're using it right now uh, with the client. What kind of adoption rate are you seeing with this over the last couple of years? Um, it's very popular. It's one of the, as far as in the React community, that's what I can speak to. Um, it, it's one the one that comes to mind. The one competitor is uh, Next, uh, I believe it's Next.js, SWR. Um, yeah, check this out if you want to, if you use Next.js, this is another option. Um, but React Query is known to have more features and more, more of the cool things built in. Uh, this is a little bit like leaner and light, but between React Query and uh, SWR in the React community, these are the most referenced and well thought of libraries. Um, working with service side data. All right, well, thank you very much. Well, Paul, thank you so much. This was really great. Uh, I, I know I've got a few more questions, but I'm gonna go research on them. I've got the tan stack site up over here. Uh, so this is a good little quick intro uh, with the appetite and hopefully people will go uh, take a look at it more. Uh, so I just wanna remind everybody that next week we're gonna conclude our spring summit. And it's going to be a Java workshop on next Friday, and it's going to be a hands-on with gRPC. That's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please uh, join us. It's going to be about a two, two and a half hour workshop. Uh, also, just uh, another reminder that every Thursday at 5.15 Eastern, 4.15 Central, we do our lightning talks. And next week, our Android engineer, Daniel uh, Otoy, will be talking to us about Mastro automation. We hope to see you then, and have a good day.